Comments made on the following paid commercial program are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. On the program this week, tax tips with David Ingram, money marshals, and with a look at the economic and political life of our province in 2010, our special guest is Bill Vanderzam. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox, and with a look back on this first Saturday of December at a tumultuous year in the economic and political life of British Columbia, it's a pleasure to welcome back to the program former B.C. Premier Bill Vanderzam. Thank you, Sterling. It's good to have you back with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Had you anticipated at the beginning of 2010 that you would be as much of a player in this year as you have been? If I had anticipated this, I'd probably be down sunning someplace in Palm Springs or such like now. So no, I didn't anticipate all this. I thought I would basically get in, short trip, and out again. It turns out to be an, a forever journey. But we're gaining. We're making progress. Uh, perhaps not quite as fast as we had hoped, because we thought by now perhaps the government could have said, we're ending the HSD. We're not going to win this battle. They haven't said that yet, although they're getting closer to it now that the campaign is on for the leadership of the Liberal Party. There's different candidates coming on right. saying, we'll move up the date mm -hmm. of the referendum. Uh, today, I even heard mention that perhaps a candidate might suggest that, forget the referendum, we're going to lose it anyway. We'll save the $50 million that's going to cost and simply end it. Now, they may not end it immediately. It could take them a month or two to negotiate out of it, but that's okay. We're reasonable people. We never got into this to try and replace a premier and a government, mm -hmm. force an election. All of these are things Cause that Cause the happen. opposition to implode, the which, is, uh, which is another the, consequence of the this event. The Liberals are gone. The NDP are gone. Pretty soon, I'll be the only one left. Well, there, there, is this, there is this other option, and we've discussed this in the past, this third rail, if you will, a new party uh, in B.C. And called B.C. First. Uh, and you are not running for elected office. You've assured us that of, uh, of that, rather, on this program in the past. What is your connection to, if any, with B.C. First? Well, B.C. First is a bit of an offshoot from this whole anti-HST movement. Uh, because a lot of people that were involved were former liberals, NDP, conservatives, Greens, people from all political persuasions became involved in the anti-HSD sure. or the fight HSD campaign. But uh, not everybody wanted to go to the NDP. A lot of people don't. And I think the NDP has recognized that, obviously. So BC First was sort of the alternative that grew out of it. Now, I'm not involved with it. I'm not a candidate, I'm not running, I'm not involved, I'm not working for them. But some them. people are portraying you as the godfather of this political outfit. I, I suppose I encouraged it, like a few other things that happened along the way. And I wish them well, because basically they have the sort of platform that I'm quite keen on, direct democracy, NDHST, all of the so new voting system, a change in the system itself. Uh, basically a whole look at the taxing system and how it might be uh, changed to be uh, more productive and yet of greater benefit to those in need. So, yeah, it makes sense. Now, Gordon Wilson, has, uh, his name has come up recently as people look across the political landscape, and we'll get to the economic stuff in just a minute, but as we look across the political landscape, recognizability or recognition has to be a factor in terms of attracting voters to any political party, especially a new one. Mr. Wilson has political history as a sitting MLA and a party leader in British Columbia. Might and he find a spot in this new outfit? As you may have read in some of the columns that are appearing, particularly Rafe Mayer, they're proposing that perhaps uh, Gordon Wilson might get involved with BC First. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but certainly it's a possibility. And it would probably suit what they're trying to portray to be centrist, 
because bringing Gordon Wilson in certainly makes it appear centrist. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a possibility for that. Another sidebar question that appears to be finally receiving some front page attention, particularly from these leadership candidates seeking to replace Gordon Campbell, Bill, and that's the matter of the minimum wage. Our province has the lowest minimum wage in the nation, and a lot of people in B.C. say it's about time we got a little more realistic. Any thoughts on minimum wage? Yeah, I think it's too bad. The minimum wage has always been a bit of a political football. Sure. And whatever the political party, it's the NDP responding to the pressures from the union because if the minimum wage goes, goes up, everything else tends to go up with it as well, and that's all right. Uh, and then again, the liberals are getting pressured from the corporate sector. So I suppose it being a political issue, uh, it's not, that's not a very healthy approach. And I think uh, it might be far better if somehow we developed a formula that when the cost of living goes up and the GDP goes up or whatever it is you want to tie it to, the min minimum wage gets adjusted. The way in which many civil service salaries or contracts are arranged. Oh. Uh, as uh, the cost of living goes up, there is a, a corresponding increase in their pay packet. Yeah, if we tied it to the, to the civil service package, we'd soon be broke. We can't do <laughs> I guess, that. But, I guess. Yeah. But you, it's the same principle yeah, at right. play. That's right. Uh, on the matter of the HST, I think it bears clarifying. If the HST is rescinded by either the current Liberal government or the people through recall or eventually a referendum, it has to be stated that that tax, that portion of tax, is not going to disappear, is it? It's going to be replaced by the old provincial sales tax. I think, Bill, there are people in the province who say, Let's get rid of the HST. Let's just have GST is what they seem to be thinking, little realizing the government of British Columbia can't afford to, to pass on all that tax revenue. No, what happens, you go back, if the HST is gone, you'd obviously, until the whole thing gets revamped somehow, and I can't predict when that could happen, but it may, uh, but in the meantime, you'd go back to the old PST and the GST. Right. Which means you'd get PST, on a lot of goods, most goods, with exemptions, uh, exemptions for children, families, for uh, environmental products and such like, uh, and you'd have the GST on everything as it was before, so on services and goods, all goods and services. So it does change it considerably to the tune of about two billion or two and a half billion dollars. But it's not uh, the removal of the HST by the provincial government is going to mean a reduction in the tax at the till of 7 or 8 percent. That's just not going to happen, is On it? some products it will, but no. For most things that you're buying through the till, you'll still be paying the federal tax and the provincial tax. Our special guest this week on the Money and Wealth Show is Bill Vanderzam. Lots more to come. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Our project in Arizona is electrolytic manganese. We have a resource of 11 billion pounds, currently trading at $1.40 a pound. Our cost, 44 cents. For more information, go to our site at AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me direct at 604-531-9639.